Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to talk about the planar surfaces command. The surfaces menu here can be found under the surfaces module. This pull down menu, if you have animation, polygons, surfaces, then you have this surfaces menu available. I'll break that off. And we're going to go over all of these surfaces commands in, in the next week, and, and we have been in the past also. I've already done a revolve video and a loft video. Feel free to check those out. And now we're going to go over planar. Now planar, as it can be implied from the name, planar is a flat plane or flat surface and it's generated using curves. So this only works if your curve is flat. And just to demonstrate this, I'm going to create NURBS Primitives Circle. I'm going to click and drag on my grid here. This literally just gives me a flat circle curve. So there is a, a NURBS primitive circle if you want to just quickly create a circular curve without having to draw it. I'm going to select my curve. I'm going to hide my grid for now. Surfaces, planar. I'm going to go into the options and make sure this is all reset with default settings. Edit reset. And planar trim. Let me get this. So it's literally just a surface that's filling this curved area, or the area of this curve, I should say. Now it has to be flat, planar. So if I I'd select this curve and try to move these points around, if I as long as I move them on a flat plane, so I'm just moving in the x and z axis in this case, keeping the curve flat, the surface will continue to be generated by the curve. I can adjust these points however I want and I'll always have a surface here as long as again it's flat. If I grab one of these control vertices of the curve and move it up or down breaking the flat plane I'll also break the planar surface. So the planar surface requires a flat area to work. Now once you have the planar surface generated from the curve, you can then adjust its control vertices and you can make it up and down. You can, you can adjust it in this way because it's using history of the curve. If long, as long as this curve remains flat and history is still active, you can adjust the surface after the fact because of the thing called hist the order of history where it's, it's first looking at the curve generating the surface and then it's looking at your manipulation of the surface. So the surface can be manipulated using its control points without any issues. But if I adjust this curve and make it not flat anymore, the surface will break. So just keep that in mind. And that's the basics of a planar surface. Uh, we're going to go into the options and more advanced uh, usage now. So as long as you're ready to go on forward, please continue to watch. Uh, otherwise, that's the basic supplier covered. So you don't have to use a NURB circle, obviously. You can j draw your own curve. If I bring the grid back, and I'll delete these. I'm going to create CV Curve Tool, or you can use EP Curve Tool, either one. And you can either draw a circle, which essentially does the same thing we just did, or you can draw multiple curves just as long as the curves create an enclosed flat area. See here I got four different curves I'm drawing here and curve snapping the first point to the previous curve and then for this last one I'm going to curve snap the last point to the first curve and hit enter. So now I have these four curves they're separated they're all in but they're all making a flat enclosed area so I can select them all surfaces planar and it will work so as long as your your curves are enclosed as in there's no open gaps and they're flat then your planar surface will work so if I select this control vertex at the end here then break that enclosed area so now even though it's still flat but it's not it's no longer closed the planar surface is broken 
let's look at some of these options here. We go to surfaces, planar options. Not a whole lot of options. First is surface degree. By default, it's cubic. So if I right click on my surface, control vertex, you'll see I have all these points to work with. When I adjust them, the uh, transition of the surface is very smooth and rounded. Let me delete my surface here and create a new one using the linear degree and apply. Same result really when it comes to how the surface looks after creating the planar surface. We go to control vertex, you'll see I only have four points to work with. If I can adjust these like so. So the degree is how many control points you have to work with with your final resulting uh, trimmed surface. So undo all that. Click the surface here. Select my curves again. And then we have curve range complete and partial. Now, typically with other uh, surfaces commands I've gone over with complete and partial, it's allowing you to generate a surface with a partial curve. And now this option is here, and not to be honest with you, I haven't been able to make it work. So if I choose partial, and I'll go back to cubic also with my surface degree, I'll hit apply, and you can see we got our subcurves. But if I adjust them, the surface breaks because essentially you're breaking off of this closed curved area because you're essentially saying I want you to only render you know half of this curve then it all of a sudden it breaks the planar surface so I'm not really entirely sure why it gives you this option because every time I adjust it it literally breaks however in the channel box there is this planar trim surface and you have the degree option here so you can change it between linear and cubic after the fact there's also keep outside so the uh, keep outside option here that you find in the channel box is not in the planar trim surface options whenever you create the planar it's only after the fact so if you choose this keep outside and type in on or you can type in the number one it's like a binary thing where one is on zero is off so if you type one enter it turns it on. So you can see what you get is the reverse of the planar. So instead of the planar surface within this curve, you're getting uh, the big plane outside the curve with a hole where the curve is. So if you ever want to create a hole in the surface, this is another way of doing that. But yeah, even with the outside turned on, the subcurves don't really seem to do anything. So that's one of these mysteries to me. If you happen to know the answer, definitely let me know. Um, it's just, yeah, you, you can't do really a partial planar surface with the partial uh, curve options. I like those surfaces, op planar options here. So the last uh, option here is the output geometry. And I've actually gone over this already with another video. Uh, there's NURBS and polygons. So the polygon output options gives you lots of different settings to play with I definitely encourage you to look at the uh, convert NURBS to polygons video I've already done I put a link right here in this little hole <clears throat> where you can go and look at all of these settings I made a separate video just because all of these surfaces commands use the output geometry uh, setting with polygons as an option and instead of going over it in each and every one of those videos I decided to make this own video separate that you can look at yourself if you're interested in that. So with that, I guess the only other thing is, uh, as with the other commands, you can use NURBS surfaces to create a planar. So go to create NURBS sphere. And if I right click on my sphere and choose isoparm, an isoparm of, of a nerve a surface is literally these lines. These are all isoparms. So I just choose one, or you can click and drag if you want one like in between here. 
and go to surfaces planar. So it literally creates a planar surface using the curve from a nerve surface. So if you wanted to create some kind of nerve uh, surface that's not a sphere, obviously you can do some kind of crazy cloud shape or whatever. You can still select any nerve surface, uh, nerves uh, curve from that surface and make a planar from it. One thing that's cool about this, if uh, you choose in the attributes here, you get min value and max value, which like I said, I'm not sure why they give you, because it doesn't seem to really do anything. But then you have isoparm value and isoparm direction. Based on the curve that you chose is what your value is. So since I chose a point on the surface between these two isoparms to create my planar, my isoparm value is 2.5 almost. If I choose 2, hit enter, it's actually as if I chose this line. And you can choose 1 and chooses this line by this grid. That line here. So it's if I click this and middle click and drag, you can see I can scale this uh, value and choose any point along this sphere as my planar source. So if you just choose any surface curve, doesn't matter which one, you can always adjust it after the fact for this from this isoparm value option here. Then you have isoparm direction, which is V because we're doing this horizontal curve. If you choose U, it'll break because it'll choose a vertical curve which ends at these poles and because one of these curves would not be closed because it would stop and start at these poles it breaks the surface so we go back to V and it comes back because the horizontal curves are closed so I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell with history like before you can adjust the spheres shape and the resulting shape of the planar will adjust accordingly because of history So very cool, very easy to make, just like cap off a hole in a surface or something, you can use a planer. And I hope you learned a little bit about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like, subscribe, comment, I definitely appreciate it. If you have any suggestions or questions, if you have an answer for that question about why they give you the partial, <laughs> partial curve range uh, option when it doesn't really seem to work, at least not for me anyway, curve range partial, they didn't really seem to have a good result with that. If you know the answer to that question, definitely let me know. And I will you know, post a comment or make an addendum video. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you later.